Well, we can now segue a bit into your leadership and public service. So beyond your professional work, you've given so much of your time to MIT, serving as an alumni association president, being on the MIT Corporation, and in many volunteer roles. So what has motivated you to stay so engaged with MIT and the community throughout your career? So I love MIT and all that it does for the world. You know, I had a great experience both as a student as an and as an alum since I graduated. So just, you know, I like the ecosystem. And, um, and I also benefited from never leaving the area and building relationships within the broader MIT community. Some of my best friends are from the MIT community and they're not necessarily the ones I knew as a student. So, you know, so you kind of, you know, when you kind of build on those relationships, it just becomes deeper and um, more meaningful. Um, and then I also get a lot of energy from the people in this community who, you know, tend to be focused on real problems and the quest to solve those problems. You know, there's kind of, there's a nerd in almost everyone I encounter in this community, and that's kind of beautiful. Well, you've led in both professional and volunteer settings. So from your perspective, what makes for effective leadership in each, and how do those experiences complement one another? So, um, so for me, uh, I've always liked being in charge, even, you know, as a young child, I was the the family navigator, the family restaurant picker, you know, whatever, you name it. I just naturally like being in charge. So that that leads that got me into more leadership um, kind of roles. But uh, but I also in reflection, you know, I had to learn to be a better leader. It's, you know, that that um, the more you take on leadership responsibilities, the more you learn to become a better leader. I think that's a real truth. Um, so, you know, the, the goals you have in different settings, whether it's a private sector or volunteer sector may differ, but how you manage people and working with a group towards a common result is the same, right? I, I don't really see that huge of a difference. Um, you know, when I was younger, I always had an image of what was the right thing I was striving for? You know, I mean, because I was problem solving oriented. So in a situation, like I would see the situation, then I would have the image of what the right thing to do. And then I'm trying to get everyone to move to that. Okay. You might understand that view. Uh, but then I think one of the things that I've learned over the years is to be more flexible and accommodating. And, and so that what, what that led to is that, that, I mean, I still always like having that picture, but I would say that picture is maybe a little fuzzier so that it's a bigger umbrella to allow for different ways to get to that result. So last but not least, I have one last question. So for students and young professionals who want to build a meaningful career in transportation or make an impact through public service, what first steps would you encourage them to take? Yeah, so I would just say jump in and do something related to transportation. There are so many needs everywhere. Um, you know, you could go to your town meeting where there's something transportation, when there's something transportation related being de discussed. So in Arlington, my town, as a result of a town meeting, the community came up with this project to put little red flags at um, crosswalks where there are a lot of students uh, walking to and from schools. And so, so you have a bucket at the two light poles on each side of the crosswalk. It's a very homemade contraption, but when the students walk across with their parents, they can hold a little red flag across, they bring it to the other side, they leave it on the other side, but when they're going home, they take it all the way over, right? And so that was created through kind of a community effort. You know, parents and kids built those little things together. And then they maintain it because they do need maintenance because when the weather is bad, whatever, 
you have to make sure there are enough of flags on the other side every time. So that's, that's a very tangible view. Um, you can reach out to a researcher you might know through your networks and offer to help, look for summer internships. I'm a big believer of in working in high school because I think it makes you a better worker in the future. Um, and then um, you can think of an idea for an app that might make it easier to travel. You know, I, I remember hearing about a long ago app that someone in Vancouver, Canada developed to order a coffee while you're in your ride. And so it'd be ready when you got it out. You know, I mean, like so simple, but but was very mean, you know, meaningful when it first came out. You can read books. There are tons of them. But just jump and learn more about transportation in any way possible. You know, it's an exciting field. And there are I mean, what's wonderful is there are so many ways to contribute and make a difference. Thank you so much. I learned so much about your viewpoint as a leader in transportation, and I'm sure everyone listening did too. So thank you, Hannah. Well, thank you, Sophia. You've been a very nice, very um, wonderful host. Thank you.